This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. I have the session open from our tracking chapter. And in the mix window, when we're mixing, we should always, always, always have a master fader open. So I'm going to go Shift Command N and make a new stereo and master fader. And I'm going to put him off on the right here, but not all the way to the right, just before the click. Okay, so let's start with this focus idea. One way to do this is literally to line up the tracks from left to right in their order of importance. It forces you to think about what's most important, and then what's next, and then what's after that, and so on. So if you use this system, and assuming all your tracks were recorded at the proper volume, your faders would sort of look like this. They would descend in a line because as you move to the right, things become less important in the mix and like that. That's the idea. Now you can go the other way and put important things here next to the master fader and work your way up. So these are the least important things, and then the things get louder as they move toward the master fader. It's not conventional to do this, but when you're learning how to mix, it sort of forces you to think of things in some order of importance, instead of just arbitrarily putting the drums on your left here, and the bass next to that, and the keys next to that. So there are several ways to get something more prominent. Let me just move my levels back here. And we'll talk about these guitars here. So I've soloed both guitars. Let me get them to a reasonable listening level, and we'll take a listen. All right, let's just pretend we had one guitar. Let's concentrate on him. All right, so if we wanted that to become more prominent in the mix, we can raise its volume. That brings up every frequency that we recorded. Another way to do this is to insert an EQ, and I have my seven bands sitting there. And now, if I just play this part, let's say we want the guitar to be louder, but warmer and louder. Okay, so that's warmer and louder. It's boosting the volume of selected frequencies here, and that's what EQ does. Now we can also cut those frequencies. All right, so that's making the guitar brighter, simply by reducing the warmth reducing the bottom of it, it makes it brighter. Another way to make it brighter is to boost the top. Or to cut the top. So lots of options there for creating textures in the sounds. And if sounds are fighting one another, this is a good way to do this. Boost the good stuff and cut the bad stuff. So you can roll the rumble out of the acoustic guitar. Now some of this takes planning as you record. If you record everything in stereo, you're going to be tempted to pan everything full left and right. So these guitars would go full left and full right. and if you're tracking guitars and you know you're going to double the part, well, record them in mono so together they act like a stereo pair. So let's do this with these guitars. I've put this EQ on this first one. I'm going to option click these two little balls and make them go back to flat. And I sort of like the warmer sound here on the left. And then I will close this and option drag that 
EQ over to the other guitar and then click on this to change this iteration. And let's do the opposite of this guitar on this side. So we'll bring this guy up. So this guy's a little brighter. And then we'll switch back to the acoustic guitar. And this guy's a little darker. And let's see how they play together now. All right, so same guitar, same basic performance, same mic, but they sound a little different now. They give you a kind of a more balanced sound together because they're not absolute doubles of one another. So that's a trick for getting similar parts to be a little bit different from one another. And the idea here is that everything should complement everything else. What I usually do at this point in the mix is to set the volumes for each component. So whether it's MIDI, or it's a vocal, or a sound effect, and that becomes my rough mix. And as I'm setting those rough volumes, I'm thinking about the texture of each element, like this EQ that we just did on the guitar. And then the next step in texture is, does it need reverb, or delay, or perhaps some compression? So is the volume perfect from end to end, or does it need a volume move, or lots of volume moves? And those are the next steps, and we'll talk about those next.